Also, are you aware of the uh, rareness of some of your books? Like, um, for example, uh, I have right over here, actually, like Westgrave's new Nightmare is actually like, is actually like 40 something dollars on Amazon now. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, I, I, all of my books, all of my, yeah, all of my books are out of print and have been out of print for a long time. Um, so I see, like I used, not long ago, I used to joke that, you know, it, it costs you more for postage than to get that book. Because <laughs> I've, I've seen it on Amazon where it's like a quarter and then four bucks for shipping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that happens a lot, yeah. But I, but in the last couple of years, that book's been popping up again. I, I think I showed you, well, like in the, the uh, Slash of the Titans book, it's mentioned. Uh, uh, this documentary on novelizations, it's it's featured. Um, the stuff that's been on Bloody Disgusting, it's sort of popped back up. So maybe that's why it's going up in price on places like Amazon, because people are vaguely aware of it. Yeah, also like some of your tales of uh, Freddy Krueger's tales of terror books are like also like 30 something dollars it's wow. insane. <laughs> yeah I'm gonna have to check after this because I had no idea like, I am extremely lucky with this one because I got it for like five dollars <laughs> so nice. I got I got lucky with it but uh yeah, yeah it, I have it, only it's... one I have only one copy of it myself because it just like the when I've tried to buy it I only have like I only find it you know, they have one copy left and one copy left. What I really want is a stack of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it then, it, especially if they're if they're going up in price, it costs me like a thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just a few of them. Um, also, uh, like you mentioned yesterday, you came up with the uh, title uh, or like the tagline from uh, Evil Gets an Upgrade. Yes. Like, how, how did you come up with that? And how did you uh, mention it to the studio and stuff? So, so the way that happened is, so I've, I had been working with um, Sean Cunningham and his team for a while, just on a very casual basis. It was mostly sort of like a, being a professional fanboy, you know, oh, right. <laughs> employee or even a friend. And so um, I had been for a while trying to sell uh, uh, Sean on the concept that video games are the next big thing that you guys should be getting Jason into and not just movies. And so Jason X as a movie was actually born on my kitchen table because the writer Todd and the uh, pro producer Mark, we were all over and I was showing them horror video games. We were playing video games and playing a little bit. And we, we, um, uh sat around my kitchen table and just said well if we were going to just do the stupidest weirdest just out there is jason movie what would it be and we came up with this jason of the future it wasn't the sci quite the sci-fi thing because it still took place on earth but we were talking about jason in the future so then boom, next thing that happens is suddenly jason x has been written and and by todd and so they <clears throat> because I had sort of helped them and I'd been working on Freddy versus Jason, they took me out to dinner. So the whole production team, I don't know if Todd was there. Um, and we went out to dinner and they, pre they presented me with the script of, of uh, what was at the time called Friday the 13th part 10. Right. And then I couldn't read it at the table, obviously. So they, they, um, described it to me and they described the section spoiler alert people by the way <laughs> uh they described the section where he gets rebuilt by nanotech you're right you're right yeah and i said oh and then they said oh and then now he's like this sleek future he wasn't really sleek in the movie but sleek <laughs> futuristic um uh you know jason i go oh that's just like a microsoft product you you you'd label that jason 10.0 evil gets an upgrade that would be the marketing <laughs> campaign for it and the marketing guy goes, ooh, that's a really good idea. And he, he just writes underneath the title, Evil Gets an Upgrade. And, and we just finished dinner. It was all pleasant and everything. And a year, I didn't see them again for a year. A bunch of stuff went on. And then a year later, I, I see the, the newer producer in a grocery store. And he goes, oh, yeah, the, the movie's coming out. He goes, it's called, now it's called Jason X. 
evil gets an upgrade. <laughs> Sean's brilliant. I'm like, uh, I, I, I came up with that. Really? Yeah, I'm explaining the dinner. And what I did, what I found out later was that after that dinner, they liked it so much, they changed the title of the film. They hadn't pitched it to New Line yet. <laughs> and so they sent it over now with Jason Ten X, Evil Gets an Upgrade. And that happened. Wow. And I'm like, yeah! <laughs> you should have gotten credit for it. Like, aware, like, um, it's even on the books. Like, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. When I saw it on the book, I was just like, <laughs> oh my gosh, they're getting so much mileage on it. And I, the ad campaign cost millions of dollars. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, there's all these millions of dollars being spent on four words I kind of tossed off at dinner. Yeah. <laughs> And the, but but it's like I, I also told you on the other hand, you know, one, one of the measures of, of being good is that you're good enough for people to want to rip you off. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I don't mean that even on the, on the you know, uh, t terrible um, on even on the level of stealing, although that happens, too. I mean, we're all still friends. It's just one of those things that, that, that yeah. happen. Um, but, you know, honestly, at the end of the day, I look at. You know, I have the poster at home. I look at it every day I because it's on, on my walls. I I see the movie and I go, yeah, I was a part of that. Yeah, that that's really awesome. Like, that's what I want to, um, my dream is to become a director myself, uh, uh, especially a horror director. Like, my uh, biggest inspiration is uh, Wes Craven. Uh, right. Because he, <laughs> like, how can you not love his movies, you know? Right. Um, uh, but, yeah. it, it, but it seems so awesome to me. You have just like a poster of your own movie or uh, a movie you've been a part of and being like, yeah, I, I did something to help this movie uh, get made. That like That's so awesome to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wes, uh, Wes was, A, a super nice guy. And I, and I found this out later that he actually grew up in Cleveland, not far from where I grew up. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Like, I didn't know that until much later, like, until I really started getting into new, the new nightmare process and then found out that, and then my family moved and it was really about three or four miles from the, from the neighborhood that he, he grew up in. Wow. That's, uh, so maybe you even passed him when, when you two were kids. <laughs> well, he was, he was a little bit older than me. So oh, right. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think maybe not. <laughs> Yeah, but it is awesome to know like that he was really close to you actually, and then mm -hmm. later you got two got involved in like the same project really. Yeah, yeah, he was super great. I, I, I um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I yeah, I miss no, I miss Wes because he was he was like there were there are people Sean, Clive, Wes. There are people who are really good at this, and also by the way, really nice, cool people. You would think yeah. they'd be like creepy and weird and blah, <laughs> yeah. because uh, what they do and what I, what I tell people is that, I go, no, I go, I go, here are people who have learned how to externalize terrible things. Um, you know, they make movies out of it. They, they explore what's behind the way people feel, what makes them afraid. So they can deal with it, which means we're all relatively well-adjusted and nice. Yeah. It's the people who can't process that information that go out and actually kill people. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's all, I, I watched a few uh, Wes Craven interviews lately, and he does actually seem like a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Robert England, like he, uh, oh, did he's you know him, uh, like personally or something like that? Or have you met him? No, I wish. No. But all, by all reports, you know, he's, he's another total gentleman. Yeah, he's a really, like, down-to-earth uh, man. Like, you have, like, Harrison Ford, um, he's, like, a nice guy, too, you know. But for some reason, he hates Indiana Jones and his own characters, you know. But, like, Robert England, he's proud of the character that made him, you know. Yeah, well, you know, it's, what's interesting is, is I, and I, I hadn't heard that about, about Harrison Ford, but um, I, would, I wonder what's behind that, because I know other people, particularly filmmakers, who make it big with one giant genre film, especially horror. And that's all they're known for and all they can get their next movie funded with that when they'd rather go off and make a film noir or a romantic yeah. comedy. But 
but Hollywood goes, no, 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 you do this. <laughs> and that's part of what leads to regret is, is being known for one thing when you wish you were known for other yeah. things. Yeah, exactly. But I, um, here's a little personal story for me and uh, Robert England, because I believe in 2016, he went to the Amsterdam Comic Con. Mm -hmm. And I went there too, you know, and uh, back in 2016, I was 13 years old and I hadn't watched the Nightmare on Elm Street films. So, <laughs> you know, I always look at all these actors just in case I am a fan of them later, you know. Right. So I had seen Robert England there, but I remembered vaguely, you know, and it, <laughs> I just regret so much not watching Nightmare on Elm Street films back then and then me again. Uh, um, maybe take a picture with him and uh, uh, autograph like some stuff, <laughs> but I didn't. I wasn't a fan back then, and for some reason, uh, ever since he never uh, went back to like a Dutch Comic Con or Amsterdam Comic Con or, or anything like that. So that's a, really a big shame. Yeah, yeah, it's it's unfortunate when you miss those opportunities, but hey, he's he's still alive and kicking, so yeah, he, he's still <laughs> <Maybe> come back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 